we continue this lovely seva of reading Bhagavad Gita in the spirit of Radharani's loving uh, energy uh, as a service, of course, to, to Gurudev, but as a service to Jainanda Maharaj and to, to devotees. And finally, to, as a service to me, because it carries so much to me to be in close association with you. So we're trying to make we're trying to make loving flow happen between us, between uh, Guru Dev and us, between Radha Mohan and us, and make it flow through Bhagavad Gita and the beauty of the text and the poetry of the and the poetry of what happens in there. Because to remind then again what I remind every time that. By Gurudev's mercy, we've come to, come to understand Bhagavad Gita as a very important introduction to bhakti. And uh, an uh, introduction into the way we can understand the Radha Mohan, even beyond the, the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but understand the Radha Mohan in Vedic thinking from even farther back. We remember how old Bhagavad Gita is and how relatively new Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance is. And the key to understanding that is been, has been to, to, to read the Bhagavad Gita as a, a book about loving devotion. And we, we started then by Gurudev's instructions in, in chapter 9, and we've worked slowly through um, to the up the middle of the chapter, very slowly, I guess we'd say. The last time we almost finished uh, verse eleven. So let, rem let me remind you of some of the things that we said about verse eleven. It was a very lovely discussion with uh, Jayananda Maharaj and others. Chapter eleven is about fools, isn't it? It's about Muda, the foolish person. And so we use this verse to ask, also with Gurudev's help, to understand what a fool is. What is a fool looking for and what is a fool not finding? And we said that, we said that a fool is foolish in two ways. The first way is easy. The fool is just wrong. The fool looks out the window when it's raining and says, the sun is shining. Just wrong. But secondly, a fool is wrong in an important way. Because what is making the fool wrong is the way of seeing. So the fool is not only wrong, the fool is looking wrongly, understanding wrongly, seeing wrongly. The fool is looking with neglect, um, not paying attention. So it's wrong, but it's wrong because of a more spiritual weakness, a more spiritual mistake it's making. And then we read that we are fools when we don't understand what the human form of Krishna is when he appears, when he comes in his expansion. Of course, the fool on the one level just doesn't see Krishna as God. But the fool on the second level doesn't understand what the human form of Krishna means, the material form, the expanded form. The fool doesn't understand the relation between the material form of Krishna and the spiritual form of Krishna. And this is a much more serious error to make. Because it's this error, error of not understanding relation, of not understanding what devotion lies in relation, 
in not understanding that relation is always made of love. Always made of love. Then we are lost if we cannot see that. So whenever we talk about relation in bhakti, we're talking about loving relation. A relation between two stones is not loving, so it's not a relation. But if I see another person, any other person, any an unknown person, a foreigner to me, to my eyes, and I see that person, then the connection between us has love in it. Maybe just a little bit of love, but it has love. If I see you and I see you as a person, you see me, you see me as a person, then there is already love there. That is one of the great discoveries of bhakti. But then when we talk about Krishna and we see the relation between Krishna in material form and Krishna in spiritual form, then of course the love is multiplied a thousand times. There's huge, huge amounts of love in that connection between the appearance of Krishna and Krishna in the transcendental spiritual form. So the, the fool we talked about so much last time is the one who doesn't understand this relation, doesn't understand what relation is. All relation is love. The more we deepen our relation, the more love we create between husband and wife, between brother and sister, between friends, between guru and dev devotee, between devotee and God. We increase the intensity of the relation, we increase the love. It's so simple, and yet it's what so many people don't see. If I look at another person and just see a material form, just see a body, just see hands and ears and a nose, and not see the, the human inside, then there'll be no relation and no love. This also means that when we see another human being and this love is present, what we are seeing in the other person is the tiny part of the spiritual, spiritual form. We are seeing the spirit in the other person. Relation connects to spirit. There is no other kind of relation than spiritual relation. So just to see you, to feel you, to be related to you is already the sign that there is a spiritual form waiting to, to be revealed, waiting to arise, waiting to mature like, like a butterfly out of a cocoon. So that's what we said about fools last time in verse 11. It's someone who gets it wrong and gets it wrong because he or she doesn't understand relation. Being a fool means to be wrong about sentiments, about feelings. And that's an impure relation, an impure relation to, to God. The second thing we talked about in in verse 11, as far as we came, was about seeing. Was, it was about seeing in relations. When we see Krishna in human form, in material form, we see with the eyes, we see with the mind, the material eyes. When we see Krishna and accept his spirit, we're seeing with the heart, and we're seeing with the spiritual eyes. Both of these happen in the same, in the same person. I can see my dear guru, guru with, my, with my material eyes, I can see his toes and his fingers and his eyes, 
or I can see him with my spiritual eyes, I can see him with my heart. And then he opens and takes me to the spiritual level. So by seeing the other in spiritual way, we also open up our own spiritual life and can rise towards a spiritual existence. And I use Gurudev as an example because he's the most important one for us. He's the, the one where we can see most deeply the heart, where we can see most deeply the, the spiritual form that's awaiting us. It's by looking in him, his eyes, looking at him, watching his life, that we know and we see that we have ourselves a spiritual, a spiritual form. Guru Dev has said to us before that the amount of love that we give to Guru Dev comes back to us. The love for that we have for him comes back to us in the same amount. And this we can also say about our love for God. The amount in which God appears in our heart is the same as the amount we love God. So the more the love that flows, the closer we come to the divine, the closer we come to our own Swarup, our spiritual identities. The purest devotees, the purest devotees, the pure bhakta, understand that all the love in their hearts is part and parcel of gurus, part and parcel of, of gods. So it was about seeing that second point we made last week. Philosophers see Krishna with the mind. And since the mind is limited, God is limited. Philosophers see Guru with the mind. Since the mind is limited, then Guru is just a man. But a devotee sees God with the heart. Devotees see Guru with the heart. And since the heart is endless, love is endless, then God becomes endless and Guru becomes a connection to this endlessness. The love of our heart is connected to the love of God. And this is also to turn it around the proof that there's divine love in every heart. Because when we see others, we see Guru, we see God, there's a, a, a flow of divine love that comes back to, from our heart and, and through Guru and to, to God. Then there was one third and last subject we talked about last time in verse 11. And that was uh, the impersonalists. You remember that this is a very favorite theme of Prabhupada, and he talks about it uh, a lot. But we tried to take it a little bit farther, this idea, by talking about the example of someone who goes to the temple. Remember, the person, the impersonalists, Prabhupada said, um, he asks, he, Prabhupada asks, well, if God is everywhere, which it is according to the per impersonalists, it's just one big blanket of divine everywhere in equal ways with no differentiation, no, no uh, shape or texture, no no uh, moods. If God is everywhere like that, then, then Prabhupada says, why do we go to the temple? We could just go to the kitchen and find God in the same way. Or we could just go uh, out and stand under a tree and we would find God in the same way. Why do we go to the temple? And the answer we also gave then, and Prabhupada said, well, it's because God is not everywhere. He's more present in the temple, in the deities. And then we added to that the idea of the Ishtadev. 
because the Ishtadev, as you know, is the personal deity, the personal God, but not the personal deity, the personal God. And when we have a personal, individual relation with God, then we have a chance to go directly to our emotional energy. The Ishtadev that we focus on, that Gurudev teaches us to focus on, is a way of opening the door to our heart because we have an individual, personal relation to that, to that Ishtadev. We don't fix our in intellectual energy on it. We fix our emotional energy on it. So it's like a key opening the door of our heart, this relationship with the Ishtadev, a personal relationship with God. And as long as that relationship is constant, then there's what we always call stagi bhav there. There's a constant foundation, like the foundation of a house, constant foundation of emotional flow, connecting us to Radha Mohan through the Ishta Dev. So the pure devotee doesn't say that Krishna is everywhere in the world, but the pure devotee says that Krishna is everywhere in the heart. A perfect devotee, a pure devotee, sees Krishna as a spiritual energy, he sees Krishna as spiritual. And when he, he or she sees Krishna as spiritual, he or she sees also reflected his or her own soul, her own sarup in the creation of Krishna. And then the very last line of commentary, I, I did not read last time, so I'll read it for you, just one sentence. It says, this is Prabhupada speaking now, although his personal abode is Goloka Vrindavana, and he is always staying there, still, by his different manifestations of energy and his plenary expansions, he is present everywhere in all parts of the material and the spiritual creation. So he, Krishna has different kinds of energies, different kinds of expansions. And all of these energies are reducible. It was Jainanda Maharaj who explained to us two weeks ago very nicely. All of these energies come back to divine, the energy of divine love, Prema. Where there's an expansion of this energy in the universe, in the nooks and crannies and holes and high places and low places, then there is love there. Then there's the energy of love there. It is different, it flows, it's intense or weak or broad or small. These are all the moods of love that we find in our lives and that uh, flow from the different moods of a personal God which is Radha Mohan, through the mercy of Radha and her divine love. That takes us to the end of verse 11. The, Jananda, would you like to comment or I continue? I know here, no here you. I'm not hearing you. We're not hearing you. Yeah. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Please continue it. Okay. Wonderful. <clears throat> Very well. Then we'll then we'll go on with um, verse 12 of, of chapter 9. And I'll show it to you if you like. I wonder maybe offline you give me some feedback whether you like me to show you the text or if it's just waste. But I'll continue until I hear from you. It 
So here we have verse 12. And as usual, I underline some words that I think are very important. I read, those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demonic and atheistic views. In the deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruitative actions, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. So these words are, so it's hopes, actions, and knowledge. These are all broken and defeated if they are, if the devotee is confused. And it's very nice in the Sanskrit, you could see I, I underlined it here for you. It's moga, which some commentators say means in vain. Not, not just defeated, but in vain. You're doing it and there's no point in doing it. So moga asha, there in the first line, is vain hopes. Moga karmana, you see the word karma, you know what this means. Moga karmana is vain actions. And then moga jnana, you know what jnana means too, means vain knowledge. So the verse is very beautifully describing three kinds of vanity, if you like. Three things there's no point in doing because if you are not focused on, in a devotional way on God, then there is no chance that you will, that you will, you will have success. These are three arguments that are, that are given also by impersonalists against this idea that Krishna has personality. All these three things that we want to find, hope, action, and knowledge, are vain unless they take account for the personal loving relation with uh, Krishna through, through Radharani. So when Bhagavad Gita says these are in vain, it means they're in vain when we don't do these things with devotion. If we don't manage, if we don't do them with devotion, then they were, they were a waste of time. There was no point in doing. Then we can read what Prabhupada says about this. He says, there are many devotees who assume themselves to be in Krishna consciousness, but at the heart, do not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, as the absolute truth. For them, says Prabhupada, the fruit of devotional service, going back to Godhead, will never be tasted. So many things happening here. There are some devotees, but of course they're false devotees or, or improper devotees, according to Prabhupada because they don't see Krishna as having a loving personality. They don't see Krishna as a loving being. They don't see Radharani in Krishna, which is what we see. In other words, they don't accept Krishna as personality, as truth, as personality. There are lots of ways of, of understanding absolute truth. We understand absolute truth as a loving God, God as love, Radha Mohan. That's what we understand truth to be. So for them, Prabhupada says, devotional service is empty. They go through the motions. They do temple, they do the, they do the, the prayers, they say the words with an empty heart. They do it mechanically like a robot, a robot devotee. And when they do it this way, then they will never 
reach the goal of returning to Godhead, of returning to Radha Mohan. It's the heart that matters. And these devotees, these false devotees, in their hearts, don't see Krishna as having a heart. Our relation with Krishna, with Radha Mohan, is a relation of heart to heart. And we, as, as Manjaris, want to come as close as we can to that heart. And the way we do it is by taking on Manjari Bhava and getting as close to Radha, Radharani's service as we can, by the example of Gurudev, by the mercy of Gurudev. That's how we connect our heart with Radharani's heart, and thus with Radha Mohan's heart. The Prabhupada is explaining here that there are lots of ways to be blind to that, to not see, to not see that Krishna has a heart. And don't and those who don't have the spiritual energy of Radharani, that loving energy, cannot see Krishna with a heart. They see Krishna as, as Brahman, we talked about before, as, as the rocks and trees and earth and bodies that fill the world. It's absolute truth in that sense. This is not our absolute truth. Our absolute truth is God is love. Krishna is a heart. That's the love we want to contact when we do our when we do our um, uh, practice. Then uh, Prabhupada goes on. He's right, I'm right there. He says, similarly, those who are engaged in fruitative, pious activi activities and who are ultimately hoping to be liberated from, the, from this material engagement will never be successful either because they deride, they, they mock or they criticize the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in the first sentence, we were talking about vain hope, moga ashar. So the first kind, there were three types of vain activities, vain attitudes, attitudes which will only be defeated if we have the wrong kind of relation to Krishna. The first one was hope. And now we're talking about actions, karma, moga karmana. And Prabhupada says, if we don't have a loving relationship to Krishna, if we don't see Krishna with the eyes of our heart, if we don't connect to the heart of Krishna through the, through the mercy of Radharani, then also our activities will be in vain. You can't just do the activities. You can't just go through the motions. You can't just clean the temple and, and, and prepare the deities and do the obeisances if your heart is not there. We can do all these things if we like, but without devotion, without feeling the love of Radharani in our actions, then there's no spiritual experience. I gave the example maybe the first week of of someone, two, two devotees washing the temple floor, each with its own bucket of water and brush. And the one devotee is doing it mechanically, and the other devotee is doing it with love. The devotee who's washing with love is already one foot in the spiritual world, even though their bodies are side by side in the temple, splashing water onto the floor. The one who does the washing with love in her heart has one foot already in the kunja, right there in the temple. This is the loving nature of Krishna. This is the spiritual experience that's possible if we only see the world, not from our material eyes, but from our loving eyes, from our, the eyes in our heart. And that's why Prabhupada says, people who mock Krishna, 
as a person, as a love ignorant person, as a heart, are to be understood as atheistic or, or demi, de demonic. If you mock Krishna, it's, it's another kind of foolishness. You can mock Krishna and just be wrong, or you can mock Krishna because you don't see Krishna as a loving God. To mock means to not see the love of Krishna. So atheists are like fools, are wrong in two ways. Again, they're wrong in a simple way because they think there is no God that is Krishna. That's easy. But they're wrong in a most important way, which is that they don't see the loving power, the loving Shakti of Krishna that flows through Radharani. They don't see with their love glasses. They don't see the world, which is structured and like a network of flowing love. They don't see the loving nature. Prabhupada continues, as we, as described in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, such a demonic miscreant, a miscreant is someone who doesn't believe, such demonic miscreants never surrender to Krishna, never surrender to Krishna. We come back and talk about surrender. We know this is very important, don't we? Therefore, their mental speculations to arrive at the absolute truth bring them to the false conclusion that the ordinary living entity and Krishna are one and the same. So these people who don't surrender to Krishna, they're seeing Krishna with their minds. Their mental speculations, Prabhupada says. They try to get to absolute truth through mental speculation. And it's true, if we understand God as Brahma, as absolute total reality, we talked about this before, you can do this with your mind. You can think that thought. Or even if you want to understand Krishna as only Paramatma, that's an idea we can understand with our minds too. But we can never understand Krishna as Bhagavan, with our minds. We can only understand it, and understand is not the right word. We can only understand it with our hearts. We can only feel it with our hearts. And what happens when we feel Krishna with our hearts, when we feel the Radha Mohan with our hearts? That's when we surrender. Feeling with our hearts is the same thing as surrendering. It's letting go of the mental bounds, binds on, my, on our hearts, opening the door of our hearts. The Gurudev sometimes talks about the key. He has the key to open our hearts. And when he opens it and we let ourselves just see Radha Mohan with the heart and not with the mind, that is what surrender is. That's just letting go. And it's, I imagine this as easy. I imagine this as easy as falling, like gravity. It's not like, oh, I have to drag myself up to heaven. Oh, so hard work getting there. No, it's letting go. The hard work we're doing now is clinging to the material world. That's what's so difficult. Everything is pulling us with our heartstrings towards Radha Mohan, but we hold on. We hold on to our material existence. The moment we let go, we fall like like gravity, like falling through the, through the air into the arms of the Radha Mohan. So this is not possible with mental speculation. This is possible only by thinking about the love of Krishna. Prabhupada continues, and there it is. With this, with such a false conviction, thinking that Krishna is, thinking it with our minds that Krishna is just one thing like any other thing. They think, the devotees, these false devotees think, that the body of any human being is now simply covered by material nature. And that as soon as one is liberated from this material body, 
there is no difference between God and himself. This is a bit more subtle, a bit more complicated. We must, it's saying, Prabhupada's saying, we must not think that we just have to take off the coat of material body and then underneath is God. Once we take off the coat, we, we join God and we become God. This is also an error, he says. We have to have a relation between this material existence we have and the spiritual existence we have. We have to feel that relation and know that we have come from material existence and are linked to spiritual existence. We have to know that we have a spiritual form in relation to our material form. We must always see Krishna as God, as transcendent, transcendent and never think that we just join him, join Radha Mohan, take off the coat of material life and then walk up to Goloka and say hello and, and join in the kunj. This will never happen. It's always a matter of having a relation between a transcendental God and our own material form. And again, this delusion, this foolishness is not just about being wrong, it's about also about um, thinking wrongly. So these errors that we make, these three kinds of errors, then if we continue making them, they transfer into everything in our lives. We work in vain. We go to our jobs. Maybe we're school teachers. Maybe we're cooks. Maybe we're driving the bus. Maybe we're, maybe we're farmers. All that work we do, which we do not do by thinking of service to Radha Mohan, will be in vain. So it's very nice to be a farmer and grow some tomatoes. But when the tomatoes are eaten up, then the treasure is gone. But if we are a mindful farmer with our heart serving Radha Mohan in our farming, then the tomatoes become spiritual food and they will last forever. So when we don't have this position, we will work in vain, we will learn in vain, we will live in vain, and worst of all, we will love in vain. If I don't see in my lover, my material lover, the spirit, the heart of God, then my loving of this person is in vain. True love, pure love, is loving the divine in the other, loving the God in the other. So whenever you're with your husband or your wife or your lover or your mother or your brother, be sure that you're loving the God in them. Look in their eyes and you'll see it. It's easy if you look deeply. Love the God in your lover and you will be loving that person truly. Prabhupada continues. If I can find, there it is right there. Prabhupada says, such atheistic and demoniac cultivation of spiritual knowledge is always futile, always vain. That is the indication of this verse. For such persons, cultivation of the knowledge in the Vedic literature, like the Vedanta, Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads, is always baffled. So we can read very easily, and most people do read the Vedantas and the, and the Upanishads, for example, as philosophy. And I'm the first one to say it's beautiful, brilliant philosophy. Extremely important and strong philosophy. But from, from the moment we go back to the Upanishads, 
and read it with love. Read it as, as the embodiment of prema. We will have an entirely different experience. And then we will see the absolute in an entirely different way. What you do it? You give you 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 give you mercy, special mercy. Kripa patra. Kripa patra. Rade rade. Oda. Yes. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Surprising for me. Uh. Hold on. Uh, plus three eight five nine one five eight zero five two three nine. Very surprising. <laughs> Your explanation mm. is a jewel, Maharaj. Mm. <laughs> Only Mahatma can explain this. Mm. Wow. Mm. Maya. Ask some meditate to this in your words. Wow. Mm. I feel myself fortunate to meet you. <laughs> Same more. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see any more British. Then Prabhupada says, it is a great offense, <coughs> therefore, to consider Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to be an ordinary man. Those who do, those who do so, are certainly deluded, because they cannot understand the eternal form of Krishna. Ordinary humans, of course, are made of marginal energy. They're trapped. We are trapped between the internal potency of Krishna, the spiritual form of Krishna, his spiritual energy, and his external potency, the um, material energy, the maya, we are in between there. We're very fortunate to be there, but at the same time, it's difficult. <clears throat> and if we don't see the internal form, the, the eternal form, the, the, in, the eternal form, which is the internal form of Krishna, the spiritual form of Krishna, then we are doing an offense and we are, we are lost. So the key word here is understand. He says they cannot understand the spiritual form of Krishna. Because we're not talking about understanding with our minds. Understanding with our minds is the problem. We're talking about understanding with, with our hearts. The moment we think with our hearts, when we feel with our hearts, we need a new word for this, don't we? <laughs> Thinking with the heart. <laughs> <laughs> then we can see that spiritual form uh, of Krishna and then we can understand it. Yeah. And then finally Prabhupada says in this uh, for this verse 
Yeah, it is. In the Bradvaishnava mantra, it is clearly stated that one who considers the body of Krishna to be material should be driven out from all rituals and activities of the Shruti. Shruti, these are the things that are heard in the tradition in the Parampara. And if one by chance sees his face, his material face, he should at once take a bath in the Gangas to rid himself of infection. My God. People, people jeer at Krishna. They look badly at Krishna because they are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Their destiny, says Prabhupada, is certainly to take birth after birth in the species of atheistic and demoniac life. So if we see only, we look at Krishna in his material expansion and we see only a material body, then we are sick, then we're infected, then we, uh, we, we should be expelled, driven out from the, from the rituals. We must have the experience of this material Krishna by seeing into him and seeing his eternal spiritual form. When we don't see that, we were making, we're making an offense because we're not seeing the, the loving part of Krishna, the, the loving energy. A couple of weeks back in one of the sharings, maybe you remember Gopinath Bhaya, he reminded us that aparada, so offense, is aparada. That it's an offense against the love of Radharani. It's not an offense against a rule or a ritual, like a, in the Vaidhi way. An offense of this kind is an offense against the love that is granted to us by the mercy of Radha. It's saying no to the divine love in our hearts and looking only at Krishna's material face. This is aparada. So then the last line of Prabhupada's commentary there right at the bottom of the verse, perpetually, he says, their real knowledge will remain under delusion and gradually they will regress to the darkest region of creation. Well, perpetually, forever and ever. But what's so beautiful about this comment from Prabhupada is look, look there, their real knowledge. They already have the knowledge. We already have the knowledge. The knowledge of the divine love of Radha Mohan. We already have it in us. Once again, I, I tried to say some weeks ago, we must not think to look for the divine knowledge up in the sky, far away from us, external to us. Meditation, sadhana means looking for the divine knowledge in our own hearts, because the, our own hearts are part and parcel of the heart of Dhamma. So those who don't see this, they will waste that real knowledge that they have. Prabhupada says they have that knowledge in them, but it will remain under delusion, under foolishness, and then they will never make progress in the spiritual life. They will regress. They will carry around that divine knowledge, but it will be wasted. It will be lying dead or dormant, sleeping in, in, in their hearts. So any, anybody may comment or share, it's more than welcome as always. It sometimes gets lonely here at the other end of the television. <laughs> oh, we are here. Mm. Thank you, Udafji. It was so beautiful that a verse that is not so easy to speak on mm. honestly because it seems to be so negative right 
it seems to be <laughs> like my god all these you know attributes of demonic and atheistic but you presented it in such a loving and uh, easily to understand and <coughs> i must say also purifying way because uh, i never heard this before and we are all sitting here completely uh, <coughs> touched by your words by your explanations and we feel that you are the kripa patra of Gurudev, the carrier of mercy mm. of Radha Mohano, that you explain it in such a nice way. So very, very beautiful and also easy to understand because many people in also the past 30 years, I must say, they have a problem with these kind of texts. You know why? Because they, we have all a tendency to blame others, right? And mm. to say, oh, these are the bad and we are the good ones when we are in a re religious thinking. But actually, when when we, we choose to to see from the pure heart of a servant or a Darcy, then it's just like a matter of being baffled or blinded or ignorant and not and opening our hearts for the love that mm. is the journey. So it came it came across in a very uh, devotional and loving way, although it is a subject that can easily be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I like this. So we appreciate your, your fresh uh, approach to that and loving approach. It's, uh, I like the word, Gurudev used the word surprise. I think we should remember this word more often, maybe it's very important. Because when we put our hearts in the right place, then we're always surprised by what comes out of them. Like this book, Bhagavad Gita, <laughs> I've, I've read it many times, I don't know, eight times maybe in my life. But when I sit down, thinking of you, thinking of Gurudev, thinking of Jayananda Maharaj, that I'm going to be with you and read together with you, then it leaps up at me, and I'm surprised by every word. That's what that's what it feels like to the, my association with you. It's surprise. Honestly, you know, honestly, I surprised. You know, you can explain much much better than I. I'm more more very lower than, and uh, honestly, so nicely explained. <clears throat> And uh, also this, sometimes we thinking this bus is other people. Oh, maybe that people, that uh, yeah. uh, people. We are thinking like that. But actually, now I see, oh, actually, this might be in my heart also. <laughs> like because this, this last sentence, sentence Prabhupada said, Perpetually, their real knowledge will remain under delusion. And then gradually they will regress to the dark, darkest religion of creation. Mm. So <clears throat> I was thinking this, what is the real knowledge? This real knowledge is Swarupa. Yeah. And Ishkadeva and relationship and our Swarupa and Swarupa City. Mm. If we don't know ourselves, and also if we don't know our Ishkadeva, if we don't know relationship, oh, then always might be our bodily consciousness. Mm. So that means this sent this this bus also. We are thinking, oh, that this bus is for others, not for me. <laughs> but I am feeling, oh, this, this bus for me. So Guru Dev is always you know, saying, checking, don't check others. Checking myself. Oh, I felt, oh, this is a, this is a very good bus. Oh, let us let me check. I am proper knowledge in. I'm nice flow or not. 
Mm-hmm. Also, another point that this morning I share in the morning lecture. I was a little sick last uh, yesterday, and uh, so I was reading, and uh, I was also, <clears throat> and then I got a very nice explanation of Ananta Das Babaji Maharaj. So Bhagavad Gita's most secret <coughs> things, what is most secret thing? Guhya, Guhyattama. So what is the most secret thing? Ananta Baba was asking. That is to surrender to Krishna. Is most 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 secret. Then Ananta said, "What is the result of surrendering? Surrendering the result of surrendering is prema." means love and loving devotional service. And then, what is the essence of loving devotional service? What is the essence of prema? That is Mahababa. Who is Mahababa's personification? It's Radharani. Mm. So this lecture, uh-huh. Uttava is saying, open our heart. Open our heart means Another kind of surrendering. Oh, my Lord, I surrender unto you. I love you. I'm yours. You are mine. Then, even small seva, Uttama is saying, just cleaning. We do, we doing cleaning mechanically. What with love? Mm. This is very nice explanation. It's touching me so much. And then if we step, you know, if we go one step, then Radha Mohan will accept <laughs> this seva and then we can go more across with them. Mm-hmm. So with that much, the lecture is so wonderful, mm-hmm. amazing. And actually, devotional service, spiritual life is one, one of Symptom is add boot. Good they all saying surprising. Every moment, <laughs> every moment <laughs> surprising. This also Uttamaji lecture is every moment surprising. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else to share? Our Gopinata, by here. Oh, here. Oh, oh, go to go to go you are making us laugh and cry and Lovely. laugh and cry with your, <laughs> your commentary. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I feel you are making juice out of grinding the <laughs> dust somehow. I don't know how you're doing. Like this. Yes. I had some similar feelings like uh, Jayananda Maharaj when, when you were sharing so beautifully. And I think it's because you are churning so beautifully on the words, so you, this inspiration is coming, otherwise it would not come. Mm-hmm. And I was also feeling when Prabhupada is speaking about us, about being atheistic or about not <coughs> seeing the spiritual, about not seeing as you said, the heart of Krishna, seeing something else. And I too was feeling this, this is me. Because uh, we often think of things externally, like uh, we think of this being some, talking about some other devotees, or maybe we think in externally in terms of time, 
this is me in the past or me in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, our spiritual practice is, like Gurudev says, is 24-7. So what does it mean if in every moment of the day, I'm a Dasi and I serve love? Mm, imagine. Every moment. Every moment. So we are on the process. We we are not there, you know. We are not, mm. we have not achieved CD. So automatically we we cannot do this 24-7. Every moment, every single moment of the day, when I have a quarrel with my Udabaya, which mm -hmm. we never do, but let's say we had one. You know, it's we have all these experiences in everyday life and in that moment where where am i and many times in that moment i'm just this what Prabhupada is explaining yeah. because i'm not seeing the dasi in front of me i'm not seeing this soul as Adarani dasi i'm not seeing that person with love i'm seeing from my platform of my false ego or I'm seeing out of that hope that is in vain, which means I'm seeing through my senses this person. I want something, I expect something from that person. And in those moments which we all experience, we are that, you know. I am, I am talking for myself. I'm not talking about others. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking for myself. No, it's, I, no, Beautiful, it gives so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we all share this. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah, but then you are also giving the solution, which is to always remember the source and to always remember who I am and to never point the finger out, but always try to, to improve myself. Mm. <laughs> and... <clears throat> When he says that these activities are in vain and the hope is in vain, that makes us to understand that time is very, very precious in our life. Mm. And we should not have a single moment wasted in vain. We yeah. have to always remember Dasi in whatever activities we do and in our relationship with everyone around us. Mm. So... That's beautiful. beautiful. Oh. And last when we, when Prabhupada says demon, demonic, you know, it feels so heavy and it certainly feels very far from my life. Mm. But I always remember, no, that's a false ego he's talking. Mm. And that's our demonic, because in the moment we are in false ego, we are not sort of in surrender. Right. So that's because that. The true, the true, yeah, the true ego is, is divine. So the false ego is demoniac. That's how I put it. So nice. Yeah. But I imagine what this would feel that. like. But imagine what this would feel like, this, what Gurudev tells us 24-7. We're all hopping in and out all day long. Okay. <laughs> We have to only observe Gurudev, then we know how it then is we know like. <laughs> Look. There it is. Okay. <laughs> What's the mystery? He's coming over his cylinder, right? What a meaning of cylinder. So one realization comes surprisingly. Are you surrender to your false ego? <laughs> surrender your false ego. This is the meaning of surrender. To give up false ego. False ego. This is surrender. That is the only blockage when I live in my false ego. And false ego never allow 
to lose old friendship because the false egos are my old friends from long, long time. Then, Harry, you will can disconnect with, with me. Who is with you? No one. I am keeping in your body consciousness. I give you a chance to enjoy the senses. You see, you can see me. I am I am in the form, bodily form. I am there. Mm. I should make you so smart and living life. <laughs> All attraction with you mm. because your your senses are active. So this way, we only want to who say that soul exists there. Eh? No soul is existing. They are lying to you, <laughs> but they, you don't believe them. Why? Because the boss is your teacher, mm -hmm. and we don't quit. So we, they become the boss. And my spiritual identity starts sleeping. This is the fault. Mm. And surrender means offer your false ego the lotus foot of Guru that he will open your way to me. He is stopped to share you because you will not follow. Because false ego is blocking us. Guru is the way, not a goal. We only show the way and bring to the right path that you can move. You can walk nicely and lead to the goal. And he navigate for that, mm. right? Mm. He is not a god. The path cannot be a god. God is different than path, <laughs> right? Mm. <laughs> path is the goal. The whole life we have to walk. <laughs> I know where you will reach. <laughs> but if the goal is fixed, then the Guru can show you the shortest path because mm. that will bring you easily. But my false ego don't want to take. Get it. <clears throat> that is my foolish mind. Mm. You so nicely explain everything. There is no any words to anyone to say drop that this. Mm. You have to send me a clear regarding. <laughs> my God. Every day you are giving surprise now. I am very sick today with my belly, but I cannot sleep because your class is there. I'm waiting every week for this day. Thank you. <coughs> my great, great love and respect for you. Mm -hmm. Realization. I'm sorry to hear your suffering. Not suffering. <laughs> is a material body is suffering. If he is not suffering, then how I will identify my spiritual body? It should suffer, yeah, to realize the reality. Mm. It's all positive. <coughs> they want to catch me, but why I will catch by this? 
Okay. Realization. Okay. Okay. Right.